All right, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is part two. I'm going to just go into a little flow where I tune in with my higher guidance team, which is really just a collective of energies and frequencies uh, that I drop into or expand out into when I just drop into a space of heart coherence and um, uh, brainwave um, whew, coherence, essentially. So this is meant to be felt, not necessarily understood on a linear basis. And thank you so much for um, joining me in this now moment with myself and with one another. So my intention is always the highest levels of love, light, union, and communion. I'm just inviting everyone right now to just take a breath in and a breath out for when we breathe in and we recognize that we are breathing, we momentarily recognize that we are breathing. We recognize that we are fully involved in this process. We are not an outside observer um, that isn't involved physically with the breath. And we then observe as the witness and witness that we are thinking this, that we are bringing the breath consciously into our body, even though many days and many times we are unconsciously breathing. And this can be played with in a myriad of ways. It can be played with so many different angles for we have many different uh, confluent plan words, influx, uh, influctuation, influx of energy coming in uh, from all angles right now. We are feeling this wave, this massive wave, and it can sometimes knock us off our feet. It can uh, make us feel as if we don't have feet. It can make us lose our footing. It can make us step on feet. It can make us, I'm hearing step on the toes of other. It can make us follow in the footsteps of people or places or circumstances from one perspective that maybe we don't even recognize that we are following in the footsteps of. It can make us find ourselves uh, falling into a pattern or walking into a wall, one might say. And it can also make us kick our feet up in joy. I'm kicking our heels together three times. I'm seeing um, dance with our feet. And so it can be all of these things. And all of these examples of our footing is actually helping us gain a foot. It's helping us gain our, uh, our way of filling bigger shoes. Lots of references here to feet, right? I'm hearing tap dancing. Oh, so as I hear that, I'm being called to go back and look at tap dance Ewok. I think that was a blog I posted on carryavon.com a while ago. I'll have to maybe go back into that and share the verbiage in that particular play on words. So we begin to listen to the rhythm of the shoes. We begin to feel into our barefoot expressions, one might say, and we begin to feel these other expressions fall away that no longer bring us the dance that we enjoy the dance that we wish to participate in. We get tired of the same old song and dance, one might say. And so we are feeling into this new dance for we are dancing in a new energy, a new frequency. Therefore, our bodies must change their tune. Our bodies must change how it is that we tune into the tune. And we find ourselves stimulated in new ways. And this allows us to uh, play in this new stimulation and I'm hearing simulation and it allows us to assimilate in a myriad of ways to the frequencies that are playing with us that are exchanging with us with the people places things animals um, experiences but the people and fellow humans that are also uh, opening to our signature. So many of us are finding ourselves tuning into our, our, uh, our, I'm hearing soul signature sisters and brothers. And so as we light up each other, as we light up to the light that is coming into each other, 
we begin to see one another through a different cone, a different cone of personality, of personal, um, oh, I'm seeing a, a cone and I'm being called to play with that. So the cones of our eyes will send back to us um, a picture. So the more we expand the cone, our periphery, and look at things from a more expansive perspective, the easier it is to see. Um, ooh, I'm hearing see personality versus uh, reality. So our personality is just one aspect of our soul. And that can change based on what it is that inspires us and what we're feeling inspired to, to be and interact with and play. How it is that we're being expired. Um, oh, I'm hearing letting go of what was expired. Ex the expiration date is up for many. That's a play in words. So many people are oh, that also um, from one perspective, unfortunately, literal but not necessarily, unfortunately, depending on what that person who has chosen to exit has chosen to learn or um, why they've chosen to move into a different, what I see is version of reality. It's a different world that they choose to move into. That's a whole other video. So not to get off topic, what I was saying earlier was we've moved up the expiration date. So we've moved up and that which we have expired from, we are now, um, what I was shown earlier is we're setting out a longer date. That can mean that some of us have chosen to um, move it out farther. Some of us have chosen to stay here longer. So it works both ways, by the way. Um, and so as we do this, we uh, we increase our range we increase our impact zone we increase our frequency range we increase the range of how far we can go and we and how many zones we can essentially travel through um i've got some light language coming through shukuya e nemaku ye e shi ikiwa ininik u shini Sometimes I yawn when I move energy around and burp. I used to do the spins. Feels good to do that sometimes. I don't do it as often anymore. So what I'm being called to stop and share is that our body is reflecting what it needs. And I'm hearing the shine. And I'm hearing shine on you crazy diamond. I'm seeing the facets of the diamond. And so, and I'm hearing dimensions, which I always go into that flow when I hear those words. But our body's own inner inter tuition, inner tuition, um, so we might be called to do toning, speak light language, move in a nice circle, move in a figure eight. We might be called um, to do certain hand mudras, to just do certain types of breathing. And I, this summer, am going to be putting together a series of videos with this in mind that I will be offering to teach other people how to do it for that process from my own uh, perspective or individualized methodology, we could say. So that's something I would like to share with everybody down the road. But intuitively, you'll know what you need to do. And what I'm hearing is um, letting go of the resistance. So sometimes I talked in my previous video, in video number one, about friction. And so it sometimes feels like we might be busy doing something and we're being called to go drink more water or potentially take a nap or get outside and just sit for 10 minutes on the ground. And I'm hearing to then allow ourselves to get off the ground running. But many of us have run aground because, and this is a reference to our ship, 
our body, our vessel. Many of us have run aground for we have hit the ground running, then run into a wall and not recognize that we are grounding ourselves. And that's a plan where it's, we want to get grounded in order not to ground ourselves meaning ground ourselves into the ground. It's a play on words, get grounded in order not to ground or be grounded. So we wanna be, let's play with that a little bit. When we're grounded from, a, from the, the, the higher perspective, we've anchored into the earth, we've anchored into our body, we're allowing the electrical stimulation and channels to flow more directly it enhances all of the our abilities, our inner abilities to then give us a, a bigger charge. And it also helps us to anchor that charge. If we're wearing shoes all the time, if we're not touching the earth and we're constantly plugged into our devices and we're constantly go, 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 where does that energy, energy go? It ends up getting stuck. I'm being shown pictures right now. It ends up getting scrambled. It ends up causing our grounding wires to become ungrounded. And I'm seeing when you cut a wire or when um, like, I'm seeing it get coiled up and then spins out of control. And then it kind of creates a, uh, what I'm hearing is a broken surge. This can cause um, lack of being grounded, can cause us to literally run ourselves into the ground, fry out our wires, um, and not go anywhere. Um, when you ground a child, they're not allowed to do anything, right? Um, when you ground a wire, it doesn't go all crazy. It's able to handle that energy. When you run aground, you can't go anywhere. So what my guides are playing with is get grounded so that you don't have all these things happen. And this is a new philosophy that many people are adapting, even though it is a very ancient philosophy, many of us are remembering our roots. Another play on words with our feet and grounding. Many of us are remembering that the root to our own inner stability is enhancing our charge and ability to then channel that inner connectivity with the earth. This also enhances our relationship with one another and enhances our, I just had all these words flow in, creativity, productivity, happiness, uh, appreciation, because it kind of, what I'm seeing is it tingles the senses and it allows us to just go, ah. And then my past video, I said, you have to relax sometimes in order to recognize what's going on or even just to recognize that we don't know what's going on and to then accept that and allow, by doing that, it helps us to relax. <laughs> so getting back to our roots, um, and as we do this, we then send out signals and we send out signals to the universe that we're ready for more. We send out signals to our body or our body sends out these signals and I'm hearing makes the adjustments and pheromones, which then attract, we become the attractor and I'm, I'm seeing us all as bees, like honeybees. We create this hum. And we then attract to us the nectar, which means joy, and also is literally the nectar of life, the fruits of our loins. Okay, that's a play on words. Um, essentially, it's pulling up that charge that is the, I'm just going to stay in flow about this, the crystal liquid that is stored in the body template is then signaled that it's time to move and it allows the movement to become more stable it allows us to feel more renewed and i'm hearing less isolated for whatever that means and i'm seeing that it was held and now it's opened up 
um, this enhances our own ability to communicate in the highest of ways. And that's a show I'm being shown from the heart, from the highest of ways, like our highest good, our highest vibratory feelings, our highest intentions, our highest thoughts. Um, we've heard that word, think good thoughts. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. This is how we um, essentially um, sing, right? This is how we hum. And then it becomes a steady hum and less of a surge and go, uh, uh, highs and lows and highs and lows. However, recognizing that these highs and lows give us an ample opportunity again a plan words about amplification and amplify it gives us an ample opportunity to allow the sacred spaces in our body a uh, aka the aqueduct the ducks get our ducks in a row it allows us the ample opportunity to feel the supple and subtleties, uh, supple is soft. This has to do with sensual energies, by the way. I'm seeing a reference from the root, the feet, to the root chakra, to the sacral chakra. Um, and I'm seeing this as a play on words. It amplifies that connection, allowing us to move up the spine all the way up the center, all the way out the crown. It lights everything up in a steady order that allows us to feel into whatever is out of order in a more coherent and useful way that gives us the ability to balance and play. I'm seeing play as a big play on words. I use play all the time, um, but it, it helps us to lighten up. We, are, we aren't so confused. When we become more grounded, the confusion isn't as strong because we're not just in our heads about everything. And so we will end on this note. Our ability to play with these energies is directly connected to our ability to play and our ability to feel and our ability to communicate and our ability to recognize how this is all done. And it's not a linear definition recognizing that it's merely us being alive, merely us being on earth at this time is how it's done. It's already been done. It's already being done. We are already moving through this period of time. And by the time you watch this video or tune into this frequency and energy, it has already occurred in the field from one perspective. In addition, it is occurring now as you tune into this field of the now moment that is going to be received in the now future, whenever that now is for you. So there is no time other than the now to be present with ourselves and what is happening now, smelling what we're smelling now feeling what we're feeling now, communicating from our heightened sense of stability, inner security, inner sensuality, and co-creative. Cool, I'm seeing the divine feminine frequency, which is beautiful, flowing, supportive energies. And tuning out um, of the old adages, the add-ons, the ideologies that we must be one way, that we must be always thinking. And this then moves up into the realm of all of our body parts. And once harnessed through the heart, gives us the ability to be joyful, which is what we use interconnectively with the word play. For when we are at play, and not to be confused with the stage or something that is projected or written as a script. It allows us to go off script and to um, essentially uh, co-create 
in the moment. And there's a word for it. I just can't think of it right now. And this is a perfect example of me trying to think and not just being in flow. It's basically when you are ad living because you're in the flow and it just happens like some comedians do. That's a gift. And that is a, an ability that we have to be in the moment. And that creates less friction. And we think, you know what? Today I just need to play. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to acknowledge it. I'm going to accept it. And I'm going to be open to receive whatever that has to, to offer. Or today I need to work. Even though I really don't want to work, I feel like this is what I need to focus on. And it feels good. And then we can be playful in our work environment even. Or we say, this is something I must do right now. But I also recognize that I desire to play and so i will gift myself that time or that opportunity for at least an hour today to do what it is that my body needs me to do such as ground drink more water um, color in a coloring book whatever it might be pet your dog for an hour these are essentially communications that we're not ignoring once we don't ignore it, it's less friction. Once we have less friction, it opens the flow. And when we do that, it allows us to literally find our footing, which means right now the message is find it, get grounded. P-H-I, golden means. There is this golden frequency that we have access to, that we have more access to right now that will always be available from one perspective. But from another perspective, how long are we going to resist it? Why not now? So plain words, but in love and light, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and sharing in this now moment and watching these videos and sharing them. Um, I will say I've had people that have been on the, I won't go into that, but the algorithms, um, that's kind of a plan words. I've been called to share. So we're being called to share. So if you feel called to share this video because you think someone might benefit from it, Thank you. It does increase the ripple effect that this type of sharing has on everyone who wishes to receive something from it. So thank you. And um, thank you guys always too for the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Um, I've kind of, um, it's something that we are just showing our support when we do that. And I'm showing more and more of my support for other people who are doing this work that I kind of forgot about doing for a while. And um, this is about us supporting one another. We're not at the stage anymore where, well, some people are, but for most of us, we're not in that stage anymore, right? Or that play anymore of playing in these old energies where we're, trying to bring someone down or we're trying to um, say what we think is right and talk over that other person. If we have something to share, it's the other message that was coming through, we can share it in a productive way. And in a higher vibration, we tend to share things. And I'm not just talking about sharing this video. I'm saying share information or share our perspective from a place of expansiveness and open receptivity and creativity and joy rather than um, a lower frequency of negativity. So this is just something else that's coming up over and over again. And maybe I'll do a separate video on that. In love and light, guys. Namaste.